It had the impact of a Greek tragedy. Garry Kasparov, the most prolific chess champion ever, had just been defeated by Deep Blue. The era of artificial intelligence was just about to begin. Deep Blue had been in development for 12 years prior to the match, but the technology and the history behind it goes much further back. This is If Else, formerly known as Ringed. As your host, I am uniquely positioned to discuss this topic as I am a machine learning engineer. Alan Turing made the first steps in creating chess AI in 1948 with David Chapernown. Named TuroChamp, it played using heuristics, a set of rules it would use to make decisions. The process began when the opponent inputs their move. TuroChamp would then evaluate each possible move and each possible response to that move. Evaluations were conducted by reviewing the mobility of its pieces, the safety of its pieces, the threat of checkmate, ability to castle, and the value of a player's piece if it was taken. These valuations would be utilized in a minimax algorithm. This algorithm is a recursive concept which is used in game theory. It includes two rudimentary aspects, the maximizing player, being the AI, and the minimizing player, its opponent. When considering its next move using these evaluations, the minimax algorithm will aim to maximize its score while also assuming the opponent will try to minimize its advantage. TuroChamp played a number of games. While technologically groundbreaking, its performance was rudimentary. Unable to defeat even chess hobbyists. Both Turing and Chapernown regarded the AI as representative of their own average skill of the game. However, their work on TuroChamp was successful in laying necessary groundwork and foundations for all AI to follow due to the implementation of the Minimax algorithm. To this day, Minimax algorithms are implemented in many different AI, so next time you see a stroke of genius coming from a chess AI, Remember, it's making this decision based off a Minimax algorithm. Moving to the 1980s, Bell Labs researchers Joe Condon and Ken Thompson began work on a new system, combining both the most recent advances in specialized chess hardware and algorithmic search theory to create the chess AI named Bell. The new hardware led to a huge improvement in computational ability, enabling the computation of 100,000 moves per second. Yet, the core upgrade of the system over TuroChamp was the improvement of the Minimax algorithm by implementing alpha-beta pruning, a groundbreaking technique that significantly improved the efficiency of Minimax algorithms. Imagine the game tree as a vast forest of possibilities, with countless branches to explore. Alpha beta pruning acts as a clever gardener, trimming away unnecessary branches to reach the optimal move more quickly. In the traditional Minimax algorithm, every branch of the game tree is explored fully to a given depth, regardless of whether it leads to a promising position or not. This exhaustive search can be computationally expensive on hardware and time consuming. However, alpha beta pruning revolutionized this process. The key idea behind alpha beta pruning is to eliminate subtrees or possible moves that are deemed less promising, based on the values already discovered along the search path. The algorithm keeps track of two important values, alpha and beta. Alpha represents the best maximum value found so far for the maximizing player, while beta represents the best minimum value so far for the minimizing player. As the algorithm traverses the game tree, it compares the current value with alpha and beta. If the current value is worse than the alpha, for the maximizing player, or better than the beta, for the minimizing player, it means that further exploration of that branch is unnecessary. The algorithm prunes that branch, discarding it from further consideration, saving computational resources. By eliminating these less promising branches early on, alpha beta pruning drastically reduces the number of nodes that need to be evaluated, leading to significant speed improvements. It allows the algorithm to focus on the most relevant branches, increasing the efficiency of the search process without sacrificing accuracy. The introduction of alpha beta pruning brought a remarkable leap forward in the performance of chess AI. Suddenly, machines could evaluate more relevant moves in less time, allowing for deeper searches and more strategic decision making. But this still was not enough to defeat top chess players. This story, if anything, doesn't detract from human intelligence, 
but highlights it. So we're going to take a quick look at Garry Kasparov, who is in contention for the best chess grandmaster ever. In his prime, Kasparov reigned as world champion for 15 years, defeating the best of his era. Chess grandmasters can calculate up to roughly 20 moves in advance, but per Kasparov's own words, he would usually only calculate 3 to 5 moves ahead remarking you don't need more. It's not just the ability of grandmasters to calculate deep, it's their ability to estimate the value of a position, or as we have seen, the value of exploring a branch. By the fourth or fifth move, a grandmaster would generally know the evaluation of a given branch. It's easy to see how both humans and AI review chess in similar manners. Inspired by Bell Labs' work, IBM began development on Deep Blue in 1985 with the aim of pushing the boundaries for this type of chess AI to the extreme. This new contender had more powerful hardware and its software was carefully crafted for maximum efficiency and depth. It could process a mind-boggling 200 million positions per second and the secret weapon which allowed this was a parallel alpha beta pruning implementation, allowing multiple trees to search for the optimal move simultaneously, making Deep Blue a seemingly unbeatable brute force computational machine. Confident in their implementation, IBM wasted no time and challenged the reigning world chess champion Garry Kasparov to a set of six games, in hopes of becoming the first AI to beat the world chess champion. By 1996, Kasparov had been world chess champion for 12 years. It was Kasparov's 20 move depth and ability to evaluate versus Deep Blue's purpose-built hardware, parallel alpha beta pruning and ability to consider 200 million positions per second. And to everyone's surprise, Kasparov actually did it. Winning 4 out of 6 games, this is shocking and is actually a more impressive feat than the inverse occurring. Kasparov managed to defeat a machine which had computational powers far beyond any human. However, this triumph was short-lived. In their second encounter in 1997, after some refinements, IBM's Deep Blue secured a groundbreaking but slight 3.5 to 2.5 victory. But I like to focus on the first encounter. And while people say the second interaction was a Greek tragedy, the first interaction was human brilliance. To this day, I'm shocked that Kasparov could have won with such insurmountable odds. And after seeing the growing ability of artificial intelligence, we should applaud him more for this victory. And we should also applaud all the researchers who developed these machines. This was If Else. Please follow for more videos on artificial intelligence and machine learning. Call back for more.